very much. It's um, <laughs> um, thank you very much. It's uh, my great pleasure to um, speak to you about this. I have a great passion for augmented reality, and so um, I should point out, point out that I I really would like people to uh, ask questions and uh, say what what they think and what's good and bad. AR really hasn't been used in anger in a large way in the educational setting, so it'd be interesting to see what people's opinion is of this. So who am I? Um, for those in Australia, uh, I'm a NICTA fellow. Um, I'm also a research leader um, in the Mawson Institute, uh, which is a new facility for advanced manufacturing, a new visualization lab. As I said, I'm the director of the Wearable Computer Lab. I've been working in wearable computing and AR since uh, 1998. So we look at outdoor systems, uh, probably most famous for the AR Quake game. Uh, the science we work in is mainly in user interfaces. Uh, we also look at visualization, um, modeling of large structures. We've done entertainment and industrial use application domains. So, you know, what is augmented reality? Um, so it's kind of like special effects in a movie. So this is a, a shot from uh, Star Wars, and you notice the green screening. Everybody's pretty familiar with technology. And so in this, the, the physical artifacts are the people and some of the sets that you can see. And you put add, uh, virtual information in, which is the, 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 all the, the background and painting onto this uh, structure. This is at the end of the movie when they have their big lightsaber battle. Um, so the biggest difference between special effects and augmented rate is that special effects, there's a huge amount of post-processing. This one minute scene took over a year to put together. And so what we're trying to do with augmented reality is do this in real time. So if we could make movies as, as good as this in real time, then, then we would, this would be augmented reality. So it's a quick little outdoor example for those who are not familiar with it. So imagine, um, we have, this is the quad outside of our campus or inside of our campus somewhere. And so we want to put a pagola over this picnic table. And what we could do is register a graph, some graphical information. And so the pagola appears and it's registered that physical spot. And so what's interesting with this, using one of our backpack computers, you could walk around and view this from, from different angles. And so it's not only the fact that you can see the object, but you can see it in situ with the physical world. And this becomes an interesting teaching medium because then you can add information to the physical world. So, so imagine you're at some famous rock art site. You could add information. So you don't physically have to put the information on the site. You can add this virtually or in museums or you can add things. You can annotate other large structures. So outdoors, there's a lot of interesting educational possibilities for this. So. Why do I think this is good for education? Well, it is a new way to visualize complex 3D data. And so currently, um, if you want to do this, you have to display it on a projector or in a, uh, in a, um, uh, uh, on a regular display. And so what happens is, is that if you wanted to display some, something complex like a molecule, it's pretty inconvenient to, to look at it from different angles. So what, what, augmented reality, what augmented reality allows you to do is pick up some sort of surrogate object and then the molecule could be attached to that and then you could view the molecule from different directions by moving it around in front of your face with your hands. So this allows us to, to interact with both virtual information and physical entities at the same time. It has this tangible nature of it. And so uh, I think this is very engaging, especially for school children that they, uh, they, can, they can move things around. Lash and annotate the real world objects, so whether it's outside or inside, so, so you can see the physical object with extra information. So instead of having a physical tag on it, you can have virtual tags. Now the advantage of these virtual tags is, is that they can be animations themselves, they can be, um, they can be objects, they can, they can move, uh, they can change over time, they're not fixed, they can be dynamic, they can react to the physical world. So it provides uh, in situ visualizations. So it allows you to um, see um, the physical world with extra information. So as opposed to virtual reality, where you have to recreate the entire world, 
This just allows you to add the bits of extra information that you want. And so students can experiment with what I call fantastic entities, and that's what is you know unconstrained, fantasical, extravagant. You can it doesn't there's you it's things that you couldn't physically do. So you could um, so you can see things that you, you can't you, you know you can you can hold fire in your hand as it were. Uh, wonderful, superb, remarkable. So what you can do is you allow people to do things that are not only entertaining but are, you know remarkable in the sense that you wouldn't be able to normally do this. And allow students to see and interact with um, entities that you, would normally be impossible. So in virtual reality, one of the things that it allows you to do is, is enter dangerous circumstances. So whether you know a hazardous environment, you could physically walk through it. But but this would also allow you to to um, uh, interact with things that you wouldn't normally be able to interact with. Um, any questions so far? I'll press on. So how do you display AR? So what's, what's a little bit of the technology involved with this? So there are currently three major ways to display augmented reality. Um, you can use projectors, or what's referred to as spatial augmented reality. Uh, you can use a head-mounted display, which is a special pair of goggles with um, uh, the information that's uh, basically displayed right in front of your eyes. Or you can use handheld devices, such as smartphones. So let's have a little bit of a look at uh, what wearable augmented reality looks like. Uh, so this is the TINMIS system that we developed. And so what uh, in this particular situation here, um, let me draw on here. So you have this backpack that's a, sort of almost like a bum bag. Um, and Um, let me just finish this description, and I'll, I'll Sabine, I'll, I'll try to answer your question. Um, so that's the computer. These are the batteries here. Um, this is the head-mounted display here. And then on the top here is a whole bunch of sensors. And so what happens is, is you have a GPS unit, an orientation sensor, and a camera. Um, and so with all these sensor technologies, you know where you are in the physical world. And then you can uh, project information like this over here relative to your viewpoint. So you're seeing things in first-person perspective. Uh, any questions about this? OK. So, so, so the idea of augmented reality is you have to know where you are, and then you have to present the graphical information relative to your position. So another way to do this is instead of wearing the display, uh, uh, so you can what you can do is you can take a physical object and you can project directly onto it with a projector. And so the original work was done by Ramesh Rasker, and it was called shader lamps and so what you can do is then you can annotate the physical world with just projected light and this 